Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Southeast Media Sunrise, dedicated to giving a voice to authors of all genres. Returning to us here in the studio today is Andrew Mann, the author of the amazing true story, Such Unfortunates. The founder of Such Unfortunates Foundation, Andrew Mann, resides in Bergen County, New Jersey. He is a recovering addict and a sex abuse survivor. He is a part owner of a solar energy business and author of Such Unfortunates. His recent work is focused on opening a rehab that doubles as an animal shelter. Welcome, Andrew, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, definitely. So tell us what's been going on since you last were here. Yes, yes. Thank you again for having me the first time. I really enjoyed being here. It was great to, uh, I love this area out here, but it was great to talk to you. That was one of the first interviews I ever did. So I, um, you know, I've been through a lot of interviews now, um, trying to help as many people as I can. Since writing the book, I've been contacted. A lot of people have contacted me through either Facebook or writing to me and, um, you know, which it sort of, like you mentioned, uh, really motivated me. I want to start uh, my own rehab slash animal shelter. I believe animals have a very healing power when it comes to addicts. I think they can help addicts in their journey to heal. And I think uh, the addicts in turn could help um, the animals also. I saw a thing about um, in jail that they were they had cats in jails and it was really helping the inmates. And so it really, uh, I don't know, it seemed like a really neat thing. And um, that's sort of where my idea came from. But also I've, I've seen the love animals can show and how they can give people sort of what addicts have been lacking in their lives. A lot of addicts have not had very loving childhoods and loving lives. And when they get that from an animal, it sort of gives them purpose. It also being an addict's a very selfish way of life. And so when you have to take care of something, you can be very selfless, it's also good for you. So that's kind of where it came in. Well, when I first heard about that, I was really uh, impressed because it had never occurred to me just, well, how therapeutic animals are for a lot of people. And they have animals in, in nursing homes. And like you said, um, that's just a wonderful idea. Yes. I understand you've revised your book as well. Yes, I have. A lot of people, um, when I first published the book out, a lot of people wrote to me and they said they wanted to hear more about what my life was like now. So I added a chapter at the end and I, I shortened a few things that people felt were a little run on in the book. And, um, you know, so I shortened it up, made that flow sort of a little bit better. And like I said, I added a whole new chapter on and a few things here and there that I, after reading the book, I remembered, I was like, oh, I forgot this and I should have added this. So after doing that, I ended up um, publishing it and sort of doing another, I, I, I looked at the whole thing um, and I was happy with the finished product. I really was. So So I see that you've come out with an audio version. Let's just show our audience yep. the cover of the book so they can take a quick look at it. Yep. There it is. So you've come out with an audio version. Are you the one who narrated that or did you have someone else I do that? I had someone do it, yes. At first I was like, <laughs> I'm going to do it. And then I was, you have to tape each section. It's a really involved process. And I was so busy. I was like, I'll just have someone do it for me. <laughs> well, I'm kind of surprised because you do have such a great voice. I think that would have been wonderful to hear your voice, but I understand time restraints and the audio book that you did have produced, I can tell our listeners was very enjoyable and entertaining to listen to. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So what is the response you've been getting on the book on your book by people who've been reading it overwhelming it's been an amazingly great response i've had uh, so many amazing reviews and just people have contacted me and said even without the reviews have contacted me either on facebook or in person and just said you know thank you for writing this i could relate to this they want to tell me about something in their lives that has gone on that they've been through a lot of family members have contacted me and said, you know, my child's going through this. I just had a woman the other day. Um, she's trying to reach out to her son. And he's in New York City. And she said, you know, he's tried every rehab out there and failed. And she's at her wit's end. She's like, I read your book and it gave me a little bit of hope. She's like, could you reach out to him? And I said, sure. So that oh, would be that's wonderful. Yes. And if I had my own rehab, it would make it a lot easier to be able to get these people in. I would take people. 
I would want it to be like, I'd want to get donations from big companies to have it running. So if someone couldn't pay, they could still come. Cause I know there's a lot of people that need to be in rehab, but they have to wait so long for a state run place or they don't have the money to get in. And so I, I would work on ways to funding my rehab could fund itself. So what is your Facebook page in case people want to visit that? It's Facebook at amazing new book. And if you search Andrew Mann or such unfortunates on Facebook, it'll come up too. But Facebook forward slash amazing new book. And I also understand you're uh, working on, you have a GoFundMe going yes. on for the rehab. Correct. Correct. If you go to GoFundMe and you search such unfortunates, Andrew Mann, it will come up there. Yeah. So. Okay. Yep. So what laws could change that would help addicts overcome their addiction? Well, I think the, I, I, I think a lot of the focus on the war on drugs in general has not been helpful when it comes to addiction. Um, throwing people in jail doesn't solve the addiction problem. It actually seems to make it worse. Um, and I just have seen other countries that have gone to, have done a lot more progressive than us. Even Portugal just said, you know, we're gonna make all drugs legal. And everyone was like, you gotta be out of your mind. Everyone's gonna be on the street using drugs. And the exact opposite happened. It Drug use has dropped drastically. Um, and so I think it's time for America to take a look at that and say, we're doing something wrong. This war on drugs, all the pain's been caused up here. The profit's been to some, drug lord in South America, nothing good has come out of the war on drugs. It's just gotten worse and worse. And um, arresting people is not the solution to a problem. Most people that are using drugs are doing so because they have such a hurt inside that they're trying to heal. They're sick people that need help. Incarceration has just not worked. It's not the solution to the drug addiction problem. I see more people have, mostly now everyone's kind of admitted that the war on drugs hasn't worked. They just, there's not many people out there that'll say, yeah, it's a good idea, you know? And a lot of people in law enforcement I've talked to have said that too. They're like, you know, something else has got it. Something's got to change. We've got to look at stuff. So I, I think it's getting, but getting a politician that'll end up and stand up and say, you know, we need to change this is, they may say that, but then when they get up there, they don't do anything about it. So that's a difficult thing we're in. And I've seen the effects the legal system has had on, on uh, drug addicts, and it just makes it worse, makes the problem worse. So I think there needs to be a drastic change in that. So are you planning on writing any, another book in your future? I'm, at first, I said absolutely not. There wasn't any way I would do it. And then I now I've been thinking about it. So I'm considering it. I, I really am. But We'll see, it was a lot. It was a lot more to write in a book than I ever imagined. So it was a lot of work. So what have you learned since writing your book? Um, I've just learned that there's a lot of people out there that need help. Um, that, And there's a lot of people that wanna talk about things in their life that, you know, I, I so many people have been, after they've, seen that I was open because so many people are like, I can't believe you shared all that stuff. You were honest about all that. But they'll come to me, even friends that don't have drug problems will come to me and be like, you know what? I've got a problem with this. Do you mind if we talk about it? So I've learned a lot of people have a lot of stuff in their own lives that's going on. Even if they don't have a drug problem, a lot of people, there's a lot going on in their own lives that people need to talk about. And so many people keep everything inside and keeping that stuff inside keeps people sick. It's what kept me sick all these years. It really is. So that's probably the big thing. So let's talk a little bit more about the rehab. When sure. I visualize it, I think of uh, the residents going to work uh, in the rehab, taking care of the animals who are in turn therapeutic to them. Um, is that that's definitely, I think that would on be- On the right track? Uh, yes, or? yes. I think I would start out, it would be like a regular rehab with detox and the rehab part of it. And then it would get into the animal therapy and other therapies. They're different, a bunch of different healing type therapies that I've, I had people write to me. I said, give me advice. If you have something that has worked for you or been healing to you, let me know. Because 
what I would want to focus on is getting them clean for the first 30 days, getting their system back to normal. And then instead of just throwing them right back on the street, I would want them to be, um, you know, start doing therapy for what is wrong with them that caused them to use in the first place. And so once they went through that, um, you know, could go into, like you said, go to work with the animals, do animal therapy or the other therapies we have. And I think it would be a, a good thing before they went back into society to get even counseling too, but to get the inside part worked on and make sure that person was healed and then slowly get back into society. Like, you know, if they wanted to get a job, we could even maybe have like a halfway house part where they lived there around other sober people and worked a normal job, but came back before they were completely ready to go back into society because people need time. Addiction doesn't heal itself in 30 days. So when you get out of a 30 day rehab and they go right back on the street, that's why there's such, you know, failure rate. That's why it's like 3%. But if they were able to actually, you know, have a place where they could stay, work on themselves and slowly get back into society and, and working with the animals, they'll feel better about themselves doing that. So when they got back inside, it wasn't just fresh out of drug addiction. They actually felt better and talked about what was going on. I think that would be a great experience. I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. That is wonderful. Thank you. Um, so I understand there are wedding bells in your future. Yes, yes, which is amazing. So the 25th, we are, um, we're, uh, we're getting married, which is another amazing step for me. I never thought I'd be taking this. So yes, I'm very excited for that. So. <laughs> It's awesome. So what advice would you give to any listeners out there? Um, don't give up on yourselves or your family member. Um, when people say don't be an enabler, some people take it to the extreme and are like, you know, I want to throw my family member out. Don't give up on them. There is hope for your family member. I know there is. There are people out there willing to help. And, you know, that would be sort of my best advice also. And if I can do this, anyone can do this. Because as you'll see in my book, um, you know, I, I named it Such Unfortunates for a reason. When you read it, you'll see. But if I could get this, there isn't anyone out there struggling with drug addiction that couldn't uh, get this and stay sober. So. so anyone interested in purchasing this book can log in to semediapodcast.com or visit Amazon. It's available in Kindle, paperback, and audiobook. You can also visit Andrew's Facebook page at facebook.com slash amazing new book or go to new fund me and search Andrew Mann and such unfortunates. This, this was, again, this has been Andrew Mann with us, the author of the amazing true story, such unfortunates. Thanks again for joining us today. Andrew. Thank you, Jody. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great oh, to see you. Such a pleasure. And listeners, if you're interested in getting your book published, please visit us at semediapro.com and click on the book publishing link. This is Jody Hawkinson, host of Southeast Media Sunrise, Southeast Media Productions. Like us on Facebook at Southeast Media Productions or visit our website at semediapro.com.